Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kahn Report wherever you get your podcast. You watch it on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, AMP, IRE. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. And don't forget, you gold members, join me for a private Zoom session Wednesday night, 7.30 Eastern time. Going to spend about 30, 40 minutes answering your questions, having a little chat. A lot of stuff still going on, as you know, as we prepare for the draft and kind of wrap up the heavy, obviously the heavy part of free agency for the commanders. Anyway, got a couple thoughts today and I want to share them with you or just some thoughts or ruminations, whatever you want to call it. But let's start with today was, I, I'm recording this Tuesday night. It's the first day that the players can return for their off-season workouts So it's really the first day that they get a chance to be in the building, like a lot of these returning players, to be in the building with the new vibe that always accompanies a a new staff. And I I do think there's going to be a little bit more energy this time around, just the way Quinn is and some of the people that he's hired around him. I think that always helps. So I'll be curious to hear from what some of the returning players have to say. We will be talking to several of them on Wednesday, including Terry McLaurin, just to get a feel for what they think being back in the building. And listen, they're always going to say it's great to be back. They can feel the energy, et cetera. So really the key will be what what it, what they say, you know, when the season gets underway and how things are going at that point. But this is the first chance that a lot of them will have to be around this new staff and a lot of their new teammates. So we'll get a chance to talk to, again, some guys tomorrow, and I'll share that with you. I'm going to have Sam Fortier from the Washington Post on to kind of go over what some of what players said, but also get his thoughts on some of the stuff going on as we, again, get ready for the draft in a few weeks. And folks, it can't get here soon enough. So I think we're all quarterbacked out. I talked to Logan Paulson the other day, and I think we just started going over the same stuff we've been talking about for a couple of weeks. And like, we may be hitting an end to the conversation here. I don't think so because I still think there's things to decide, and I'll get to that in a minute. But as far as some of the off-season stuff goes, uh, they will, like I said, they're in Adam Peters will have a pre-dress co- pre-draft press conference in a couple of weeks. You know, they're not going to say a whole lot to give you a lot of clues about what they're going to do at number two. Um, but then they have the rookie mini camp, May 10th, to 12th, their OTAs, May 14th, May 14th and 15th in, in mid-May. And then they have one May 21st, 22nd, and then the 24th, June 4th and 5th, and then June 7th. And then the mini camp is the June 11th to the 13th. That's the only mandatory mandatory part is the veteran mini camp in um, again, June 11th to the 13th. So right now everything's voluntary. So always keep that in mind as I do as well. And listen, I think it's always good when players show up, but clearly again, it's voluntary. I think for some guys, it's important. If you want to be a team leader, I think you you should be there. That's what your job is. And I think that's where they, you know Chase Young fell short in the past with that. But again, it's voluntary. So anyway, but that that's all gone. So um, let's move on to the new guys. And they did sign another guy today, Michael Walker, linebacker, had some veteran experience, has experience starting. He started in the middle. He can play all three linebacker spots. So it just gives them more depth at the linebacker. And boy, they really turned over their linebacker core. They have now signed five guys at linebacker, Bobby Wagner, Frankie Louvu. Um, Anthony Pittman, Keandre Jones, Keandre Jones, excuse me, and then now Michael Walker. So that's quite a turnover to position that really needed it. And I'll be curious to see again the impact on all of this on Jamin Davis. And they they have his fifth or fifth year option. They have to decide whether or not they want to pick that up. And it wouldn't surprise me. And I don't know this at at this point because it hasn't been a big big topic. And even Dan Quinn said at the at the or Dan Quinn or Adam Peters, one of them said at the league meetings, they really haven't talked a whole lot about it at this point. And it wouldn't shock me if they get to the point and say, you want to see him. You want to see what he can do here before you go and extend a guy um, or give him that fifth year option because there's been, a, he's he's improved, but how does he look in this defense with this staff? It, my belief would be you'd want to see him in that before you do anything with the contract um, and picking up an option. So, Anyway, so let's get to some of the quarterback thoughts just because there's just so much going on with that, or at least so many things that are get said or debated or whatever. And I will maintain that I could make a case. You could take one of these top three quarterbacks, whether it's um, 
Jaden Daniels, Drake May, even J.J. McCarthy. Um, and you can sit there and say, this is why they took him. This is why it makes sense. This is what they liked about him. <clears throat> now, there may be some guys you think are better, but I can see why each guy would appeal to this staff. And for Jaden Daniels, there's just clearly there's that game changing ability. But as you know, he also they like how he processes. For Drake May, he's got the prototypical size. He's got a big arm. They want to get the ball down the field. He's got that. He also has there's work to be done with him. And with JJ McCarthy, he's a guy that really showed he, he showed up in some big moments. But I think there's just also some of the intangibles really stand out more than maybe even some of the, just the physical traits compared to some of the other guys. So there's just a lot, but again, you can justify, you could sit there and say, this is why they took this guy. You may like the other guy, but you can, you know, I can see why they would take each one of these guys, what would appeal to them. But let's go over some of this because there's some things that just get talked about and it's kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit. And I think people need to quit assuming that, they already know what the commanders are going to do based on some of their moves in the off season. They didn't hire, you know, when, when they hired Cliff Kingsbury, what was the first thought? Oh, they're going to trade up to get Caleb Williams. Well, I told you right away that that wasn't the case because other guys fit that system as well, but we don't really know what it's going to completely look like at this point, because it's going to be a combo. It's going to be obviously Cliff Kingsbury runs what he runs, but you're also bringing in different offensive minds to help shape an offense to fit what these guys are going to do. And so you can't assume some things and you also can't assume. And I know people still do this and um, you know, with Marcus Mariota, Oh, that means it's Jaden Daniels. No, it doesn't because I can tell you they're still looking and doing their due diligence on multiple quarterbacks at the number for the, for the number two spot. So, you you know, it may be that they take Jaden Daniels, but they're, if they had already settled him, they're going to kind of cut back on some of the other work. And I don't think, and my understanding is they have not. So, I don't think this is a done deal. You may like a guy, but you're not, I don't just knowing again, go back to the coaching search and how they, how they went through the process. And I think what you, you have to take from that is they are, while they may like a guy, they may like this guy a lot. They may like that guy a lot, but they're going to go through the process just to make sure, but you're not going to tip your hand. Cause when I was at the league meetings, nobody really said, Oh, well, they signed Marcus Mariota. That means it's Jaden Daniels. That wasn't, that wasn't the case. Now you can say like there may fit a style, but again, they also looked at Sam Donald too. So there you go, different style. But I think what, you know, what Mariota gives them, what they hope he gives them, what, and I don't know that, I don't know that he will, but I think what they hope he gives them is an ex- a good experience backup who can help them if necessary and play for half a year if they have to, if you want to draft Drake May or McCarthy and sit him for a little bit, and and that would allow them to kind of ease into it because that's some that's why you have a veteran backup and there may have been other veteran backups who to be honest are better quarterbacks but they did get one that they know because of brian johnson's connection with him from uh, philadelphia last year but again they're still looking at quarterbacks they're still doing due diligence on multiple quarterbacks and so I think just keep that in mind when you, tr- when, when, cause I don't listen, man, there's some days, definitely some days you think, Oh, I think this is it. This is the guy that's going to be based on connect, trying to connect dots. I do the same thing you do because I want to know too. I mean, I I'm going to go on TV for ESPN in a couple of weeks and make a mock pick at number two. I want to be right, but I don't think I'm going to be, they're not going to sit there and tell me, Oh yeah, we're taking this guy because that's not how, that's not what they're going to do. And, and I wouldn't expect them to, I think that would be silly. But so I'm trying to, you know, you try to parse what they say. You try to like, you listen to what Dan Quinn says. You listen to what Adam Peters says. Like, okay, who matches up here? <clears throat> well, there's sometimes what each guy matches up to some aspect of things that they like or that they want in a quarterback, you know? And, and I had a talk with Dan Quinn at the owners meetings and he talked about, you know, he likes, to, he likes to disguise coverages. So a quarterback that can beat coverages post snap or can read coverages post snap is a big deal. Well, they like Jaden Daniels um, processing speed, but they like other aspects of Drake May and they like this about this guy. So there's, you try to read into it and we all do it. Me too. And, and you just, and you're at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know. (laughs) know, I know what other people in the league think, but that doesn't mean that's what these guys think about what's going to happen at number two. So um, anyway, 
I'll get to that in a minute. But there are also there's some misnomers too. Sometimes you hear things that pop up where someone might say, "Well, you know, in in San Francisco, Adam Peters, they, you know, he was part of the uh, trade up for trade for trade up to get Trey Lance, and therefore they're not going to take a guy like that. So they're not going to take Jaden Daniels. Well, Jaden Daniels isn't Trey Lance at all. <clears throat> Jaden Daniels was a Heisman Trophy winner. Trey Lance was a guy that people thought might be able to do something in the NFL, but he was inexperienced. He was inaccurate. And he was a guy that ran at a lower level, but he didn't make, he would kind of run guys over more than he would make a miss. And it's like, that doesn't translate as well to the NFL at that position. So I, think I, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily one-to-one -one that they wouldn't take a guy that has, does what he can do because Jaden Daniels is far more ready for the NFL than Trey Lance was that season. And to be honest, I never understood that trade, but, or the trade I understood, but the, the selection, I'm not, I never really did. Um, so, you know, and then the other one would be, um, I mean, he's just they're very different. And the other one is, well, you know, JJ McCarthy is like a Brock Purdy type, right. Or somewhere along those lines, which is, you know, so that's why Adam Peters would like him. Well, he might, of course he might like him. Doesn't mean he doesn't like somebody else better, but the other part of that is, and I think, you know, JJ McCarthy has a lot of skill, but when, if you're looking for the Brock Purdy type, Brock Purdy went to a roster that was far more developed than this one is. So how will that factor into any sort of decision-making when you're looking for the quarterback? Now you can look at, uh, basically most people are going to say Jaden Daniels is more ready. Doesn't mean he's not going to keep improving. That would be a misnomer. I don't, I don't think he's a finished product either, but I think there's a lot, I think you can have a lot more film on him and to say, this is where he's at right now. And this is what they think he could probably do right now with his skill set. So it gives you some more clues. That experience has helped him. Yes, I mean, he's not a finished product, um, but um, it does give you that sense of what he can do. Whereas, you know, Drake May, the word is, oh, he's going to have to take some time to develop. So what are you okay with that guy sitting? That goes back to the backup quarterback. But, uh, you know, so, and if, but I, does, I don't think it means that you're like, if you don't take a Drake May or JJ, if you think they have higher upside and, or like, that's what we always hear about May, but I don't think that what, what it really tells me is that he had, they don't think he's gotten there yet and the work that's going to take to get him there, how soon can he get there? And if over the course of five, six, seven years, you think he's going to be the better quarterback, well, then you take the guy you think is going to be the better quarterback. But having potential and having you know this higher ceiling doesn't always equate to being the better guy after five or six years. It doesn't always work like that. So I think there's things you have to be that you have to say, this is what you're concerned here. This is what you're concerned there. Drake May does some things very, very well. There's some things to work on. Jaden Daniels does some things very well. You, the frame is going to always is going to be a concern for some. So for, absolutely, because you want to make sure he has the durability. But um, anyway, so that's just, you know, but again, the, the Brock Purdy and, and JJ McCarthy, it's not the reason he's going to take them. I think you look for a guy who's a really good quarterback, but when you look at even like Lance and Peters, excuse me, Lance and, and Brock Purdy, they're different quarterbacks. So it's not like there's a one size fits all that I think that a guy like Adam Peters would look for. And we still don't even know what his role was in that Trey Lance trade. And, and some, listen, man, sometimes the trades don't work out. Sometimes guys don't work out even after all the scouting, it's why quarterback is the absolute hardest position to scout period, because there's so many more things that go into it. It's not just as it's not just a, you know, skill set. Like you can see a receiver and the way they run their routes and the way they catch the ball, the way they block, et cetera. There's just not as much that goes into it. The quarterback, it's, it's the accuracy. It's, it's, the, it's the ability to read the defense. It's the leadership skills. It's, you know, it's the, there's so much more that you have to evaluate, which is why it's easy to get it wrong at times, um, despite all that work that people put into it. And it's why you have to use every piece of information imaginable to try to come to your conclusion that sometimes using those numbers to get to the context of what, what those numbers mean. Um, but, you know, that that's, that's, that's why, it, that's why it's, it's so hard. Um, and, you know, the other part is too, is again, like with this, with the Kingsbury system, what I don't know yet, and this is going to be Adam Peters's call. And obviously there's going to be a lot of input from clearly from Dan Quinn. He's the head coach. Cliff Kingsbury will have, a, will provide his input too, just like the scouts will, just like, you know, others, others in the organization will. But I don't know that the, the end all be all is, 
Well, how do they fit in Cliff Kingsbury's offense? So one of the things that Dan Quinn told me at the at the meetings was one of the things he liked about the, his time in Seattle is watching Russell Wilson and how the Seahawks basically structured their offense to fit him. And I think that's what this group is going to be tasked to do is to fit their offense to whatever quarterback they draft. And so, you know, Jaden Daniels did not play in this style of offense in college, but he had, but you know, his skill set, and you can tailor that to that. And, and he can throw the ball. Like, I mean, this is, that's not a question of that either. He's not, he's certainly not just a running quarterback with Drake may has experience in this system, but the system is not exactly an apples to apples from what he ran under Phil Longo at North Carolina in 2022 versus what Cliff Kingsbury ran at Arizona and what he would run here. Because again, we still don't know what he's going to run here, but we know that he's played in some of that. So you got experience watching him operate that passing attack. And I know like last year, there were similarities to this as well, but I know some coaches weren't, some coaches in the NFL weren't crazy about um, the change in coordinators as far as how, you know, just they, I don't think they're crazy about it. <laughs> just what the offense they ran, it wasn't as helpful to them, I think, to see um, his progression, I guess, because it was a different you know, new offense and it had some concepts that some guys really, I think, were, you know, weren't as crazy about, I would just say. Um, but, you know, um, that's, 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 but really a big key with, with that offense is going to be, it's not just, Hey, the quarterback runs and that's what Kingsbury has. It does have guys who scramble, who can make plays and create on the move. Most coaches will take that if the guy's a good passer. And if he's not always just looking to run, but also there's going to be that accuracy and the processing is going to be a big deal. The, the, they, they clearly want the deep ball. And listen, I'm going to say they're what, basically what I'm going to say is they want a great quarterback. So you want the guy who can move and extend plays. You want the guy who can eat the deep ball, but you also want guys who can process and make those accurate throws underneath. And so, so that's why I say, you start to say, well, who has this, who has that? And, and it's like, well, this guy has this, this guy has that. Can you put them together and make one guy? Um, that might be the ideal situation, but they all have things that, that can fit with what they do. That's the overall point. Um, and then from there, when you draft a guy, then it's up to the coaches to make it work. And I think they they have a shot with some of these guys to make it be a, an acceptable, a, a good situation, but long way to go. And um, so I think, you know, that's, that's some of the thoughts on that. And I just think it's, it's interesting because again, we're all trying to figure out what they're going to do and we're trying to piece together the logic and man, I hope part of me says, I hope you enjoy this because it's, it's an interesting debate, but I also think that a lot of you, including me, you get to the point where it's like, okay, let's get to the draft already. Let's get to this and see who the guy is and then go from there. But I still think there's some things that'll be, you know, need to be discussed. I want to try and bring some people on here who can kind of take us inside what goes on from like the middle of March or end of March to the draft. Like how, when are they setting the boards? How are they evaluating this? What are the things that when you're at the pro days or you have the in-home, the in-home, the in the f visits at the facility, what are you looking to see? And things like that, just to get some clarity or insight into what teams are going through now with this process. How many people do you call of, you know, who have either watched this guy or know this guy just to make sure you're making the right pick. And even then you still might get it wrong. So, um, but I just, I want to bring some people on to talk about that. And just, we're going to get to the, some of the second day and third day picks because man, it, this is the chance for this franchise to really reset itself with these top six picks. And they can still have a, you can have a great draft if you get the quarterback. You can have, still have a good draft, even if the quarterback is just okay. But if you hit on these other five picks in that top 100, but again, this draft will be defined by the quarterback. We all know that. And you have a chance to set your franchise up for a long time though, if you have a good draft on those first two days in particular, because one thing we know is that, you know, Peters has hit on some of those low run guys in the past. And, you know, you do that again, you get your George Kittle in the fifth round here and you're going to be set at the position, you know, so a Fred Warner and, you know, guys like that, like, that's that'll set it, but those first six picks, that's where you can get some high end talent, and this roster needs some high end talent. So, um, anyway, that's that's it for me, folks. Um, I'll be back on when, excuse me, on Thursday. Going to be talking about, we're going to be talking to guys on Wednesday. I told you that. 
and get some of their thoughts. Going to talk to Sam Forty from the Washington Post and just kind of talk about some of the things he saw. He was at those pro days for Drake May and Jaden Daniels. So he has some good insight on that, but also just like talking over some of the numbers, et cetera, that, that are important in this discussion and what they mean and how to contextualize them. So there you go. That's it for me. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you next time.